Nerd On the Podcast is proudly partnered with Apogee Electronics and Odyssey Headphones, leaders in the field of audio. The movie runs at 143, I think, if yes. I remember correctly. 143? Yeah, hour 43. Hour uh, one three. hour and three minutes. One hour and three minutes? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. One hundred and three minutes. I'm sorry. So, so it's, it's an like hour and forty three minutes. Two. You are right. It's an hour and forty three minutes. Okay. So like <laughs> so I said, it's an hour point. and forty three minutes. <laughs> what is everyone? Welcome to Nerd on the Podcast. You didn't need, but you know what? You deserve. Where yeah, all levels know. of nerd are welcome. <laughs> so even kind. you. Aww. If you're I, can someone turn this into 3D on YouTube? Like even you. <laughs> Everyone just immediately wow. bars. Oh. Uh, let me ask you uh, about student A and student B. One invested in stonks last month, and the other one didn't. You tell me which one knows about Bitcoin. Oh my god! What? <laughs> it's a trick question. Uh, if you didn't know where this is going, and you didn't look at what podcast you are now listening to, then let us dive into the Inglewood Living '90s hip hop booming comedy drama from 2015 with the movie Dope. Dope. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. 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 I think before we dope. get too before we get too far into things, my name is Corey. <laughs> I'm Tom. I'm Caitlin. And I am Josh. And this dope podcast is brought to you in part by the members of the Nerd On Nation that is powered by Patreon. Patreon. Oh. Whoa. That was, that <laughs> Shout was dope. out to the Caveless Crusaders. They, they got me into doing that. Nice. <laughs> uh, as a member of the Nerd On Nation, you do get fun, fun, fun perks like you get bonus episodes. You get early access to these episodes. You get discounts on merch. You get access to secret channels on our Discord Shh. server that are only secret, secret. for you and other members of the Nerd On Nation. And you can talk directly to us. It's good stuff. So I uh, thought you were literally going to go fun day, fun day, fun day, stuff. fun day, fun day, fun day. Uh, I, anytime I think of that joke, I always think of the Simpsons when they go Sunday, 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 and Monday. And Monday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, do consider joining the Nerd On Nation. It does allow us to grow. It allows us to keep upgrading. Like hence, we have new cameras. Wow. Uh, like hence. Like, like hence. hence. Uh, That's we, short for like Jim Henson. By yeah, the way. Mm-hmm. exactly. Um, or six hence none the richer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. I can't. Good with band. Y'all today. Uh, anyway, do consider joining that. It 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 really is amazing. It does help us grow. So uh, nerdon.tv backslash Patreon and check out that Discord. Nerdon.tv backslash Discord. And a huge shout out to our partners, Apogee and Odyssey. Apogee have equipped us with these microphones. They are the hype mic. Uh, Great microphone. Cannot recommend them enough. Uh, You can use it on anything. PC, Mac, uh, mobile devices. Um, iPad. Yeah. It's it's good stuff. Comes with all the cables. Comes with all the, the connections and all that good stuff. It's fun. Check it out. Uh, the hype I mic. helped my grandpa on a call hook up a printer to his computer, and I used it, and he was freaked out. <laughs> He's Why? Like, what are you calling me on? I was like, just my phone. But I had the hype mic hooked up to my phone. That's, I was like, that's, anyway. that's the new Steven Soderbergh. He's like, shot purely on iPhone, recorded yeah. on hype mic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and check out Odyssey headphones. We're using their LCD ones, and uh, they have a, a whole slew of headphones for whatever purpose you would like if you're an audiophile. Um, they also have gaming headsets. They have a lot of really great products. And they're a great company. They have really great people working over there. So uh, check them out. Odyssey Headphones. Good folks. Really, really cool folks. Um, shout out to Jaron and Grover. Um, but yeah, that, that that has been the housekeeping. Let us go get on to this dope Go ahead, get on. Get, get, get on. Go, 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 go. Uh, you know, I'm going to say dope. <laughs> dope. A lot today. So far, I ha- I've only done it for the title. We'll see. I'll keep count. That's you three guys... for Josh, I think. <laughs> Someone has to put a dope counter on the... Bing. I mean... Two <laughs> for Caitlin now. <laughs> Particularly thinking about uh, counting, um, you know, this is a, a one film. Oh. This is one whole film. One whole film? So, so if you're Damn. unfamiliar with the show, we like to talk about things. We have to celebrate. We also like to analyze these things. And sometimes we want to quantify, you know? Sometimes uh, we, we get brought into our next two segments. And the yeah, first it's a one... slippery slope. <laughs> It oh. uh, that deals with the end of the episode uh, where we're going to rate it, um, which brings us to our first segment, which is 
Guess, Guess that. that. Grump. Grump. Hey, it's my turn, turn now. now. This my turn now. This my world now. They tricked that guy. We need to sell the drugs. Seven bucks. They can do it. I'm going to eat my pound cake. Real talk. Real talk. sweetheart. Real talk. If anybody out there is a composer and would like to create something. By all means. By all means. Combine that all of it. That was not good enough for you, Josh. Wow, no. rude. Anyway, that headache, nausea-inducing. <laughs> that DJ earworm remix you don't like. Yeah. Um, mm. so you ever get the, it, it's like if the gurgles in your stomach when you eat some bad came out, and that's what we put on the track every day for mm-hmm. you. Or something really good for, for your you. soul, but bad for your body. Yeah. Um, so if you're <laughs> yeah. brand new to to Nerd On and guess that grump, everyone, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is the first segment where we are going to go around the digital screens. If you're not watching on YouTube, you should be to see our beautiful fucking faces. Um, we upgraded and- this for you. <laughs> yeah, we did. It's intense. Uh, That's true. It is. It is. I'm only intense, baby. Uh, do you know who you are? Not wrong. I know who I am. Um, and uh, so we're going to go rate this film from one out of five. Mm-hmm. Now, no matter no matter how high the number is, the lowest score uh, among us will be the grump for the week. We've had plenty uh, of episodes where everyone's been a five and someone's been a 4.9. And guess what? They're the grump. And guess what? It's Corey every time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wrong. Yeah. yeah uh, Corey, Corey would probably be the grump for Gory? like a 4.9. Gory. That's, that's, Gory. Now that's now what they used to call me for Halloween yeah, yeah, in that horror film I was living in Gory. for four years. Yeah. Um, when I got trapped inside a horror film for four years, that's what they called me. Gory, Corey. <laughs> and uh that? Since Crazy since time. since this is a, a scripted segment and we never go off script, um, I'm going to go first and guess who I think will be the grump for this episode. Because you never get mess it up. I never mess it up, and Not this is always time. scripted. And um, I think the grump for this episode will be Josh. Oh. Did you pick that? Because you're not quite sure. Um, no. Okay. I picked that right. because. We're all going to like it, but he might like it the least compared to us. Josh, where's your money at? Hmm. Who you got? This is hard. Someone's like, I think put $5 they're... down on someone. Who's going to short the short the guest that grump? For um, bets? I think that it's going to be Caitlin. I knew you'd say it. I mean, Caitlin. This is a hard one because I, I have a feeling that it's going to be high scores. It's yeah, be high score, grump. high scores all around. I do too. Um, actually, my my fir- my gut choice was Josh as well. Mm. Question yeah, my yeah, choices. Yeah. So that leaves it to me and the Nerd on Nation. Um, I also same for same reason as Tom. Guess Josh, but not because I think anyone here is gonna dislike it. I just think. Josh is going to be I our 4.9. I don't know 9. why you guys think that. And we'll... <laughs> do you? Because do I you? don't you know... Because you white. <laughs> I don't know if no. I do 100%, Josh. I don't know if I do. But, okay. Um, just for everyone listening, th- for that everyone reason else alone, here I think it's is... going to be... It's just... Yeah. That's, I'll, I'll leave it at that. We can it's, talk after. For everyone listening... Everyone here is white except me. So me saying <laughs> I picked Josh because he's white is the dumbest claim yeah. in the world. I'll just let you guys just let the listeners who can't see us know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that brings us to one other thing I'd like to talk about, though. Do you think this is are, is your headache gone after the song and you thought this whole guessing part was really fun? Well, guess what? You could also guess. <laughs> how many times can I say guess in a segment? I don't know, Gory. Um, guess Corey, that Corey wants you to join the Nerd on Nation <laughs> because you can participate in the poll of Guess That Grump, and if you get it right, you could become the Guess That Grumpin' Gas G- Gas gory. Guzzlin' Grass Fed Gatorade Drinking Gory Corey Guess That Grumper. Wow, gluten free. Um, Grand jury. Thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> uh, and if you get it right, you get a shout out on the show. So uh, the Nerd on Nation has spoken. Uh, and Josh, <laughs> it's Caitlin. Oh, it's Caitlin. Oh, <laughs> the range of emotions I just experienced. That's what it is. So, so are you faking That's some bachelor so ass shit. That's some like, wow. Josh, Caitlin, can you take this rose? <laughs> yeah. Josh, I'm going to need Josh. Caitlin to take this rose. Um, uh, can so you get out of the way so Caitlin can? Uh, oh, wow. So the order Fine. that this is going to go in is Tom and I are sitting pretty with no votes, of course. Whatsoever. I even put a circle with a line through it, you know, <laughs> that like null and void symbol. Yeah. 
uh, and then it's going to be Caitlin, and then last Josh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's that's it, y'all. <laughs> take part in these polls; it's a lot of fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, you can take part even at the dollar tier. Yes, get out, get out the vote, y'all. Get that get it, geezer, get get her grub. That's funny you said vote. that because, because that <laughs> Sean Combs' voter die. His son's in this movie. His there you go. Oh. Um, so everyone. Uh, listening. Now we'll move on to the complete spoiler of that segment, which is going to be our initial reactions and our first impressions. Um, I suggested this one. So, so I'm going to go first. last. <laughs> I'll go yeah. first. Okay. Um, it's a movie I've been meaning to watch since it came out. It really has. Because so someone I know a while ago, someone I know has been <laughs> dropping hints at it for almost six years now Somebody. Um, and to be <laughs> fair time. we've taken a lot of content that's not an excuse <laughs> but sometimes things just go you know what tonight I have to watch this um, to be fair Tom go fuck yourself <laughs> uh, no but it was pitched as me to me as this verbatim and it's important that I get this verbatim it's like super bad but with more heart and I tell you what it blew my mind because I watched it with my wife shout out to Dana uh, and dance. as soon as we ended it, I was like, yeah, it was like super bad. And then she goes, yeah, but with more heart. And it blew my mind. <laughs> that's exactly what Tom said. And it's correct. It's, um, it is everything I wanted it to be plus more. Um, mm. it could have been, and this isn't, this is not, this is going to sound as a dig as first. It could have been a lot simpler and still worked, but they didn't make it simpler. It could have been as simple as there Superbad. Was not because really Superbad an works, easy way out, yeah. Right? Superbad works. Um, but yeah, they, they could have made it a lot easier. They could have made it this just like super funny comedy, whatever. But they were like, you know, I need to tell an important story within this as well. And they did. Um, so I loved it. The music's great. Um, everything about it from start to finish. The aesthetic, the shot composition, everything. Next. Kayla. Not to bury the lead too much. <laughs> so he hated the movie. <laughs> um, so, you know, when you look at a painting. Yes. And. Oh, sorry. You, <laughs> you're just like, you're taking in everything you're looking at. But there's like, when you really start to inspect it. Like that scene you from realize, Day Off. Yes. Sure. Just say yes, because that's yes. exactly what you're describing. <sighs> like, you realize, I've seen it. I just don't remember that part at all. Um, but like you realize that like there's just so much, there's so many layers, there's so many things going on, and it all just wraps up so nicely into this image that your brain looks at as like we oui. huh. <laughs> Yeah. Like that's your brain looks at the painting, you're like, man, they really did this. They really mm. did that. They really yeah. and you like they this really artist really through. Everything. Yeah. Like they got the anatomy right. They got the the colors correct. Like there's the whole aesthetic of the entire thing. And I really like this movie. Oh, she really liked this Whoa. movie. I really like this movie. This is gonna be a very movie. guess uh, this is gonna be a very interesting rating uh section. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, we mean it very interesting. We We're always interesting, I don't Josh. Know what the fuck is happening to my voice right now? But I really like that movie. Caitlin, you're turning into a Kardashian. You have vocal no. fry. Oh no. Mm-mm. Okay, we're done now. Uh, uh Josh. Move on, Josh. I'll go next. Um <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> um but why? So listen up, everybody. It's dope. <laughs> That's one this for movie, Tom. So Tom's at two now. <laughs> this movie is dope. Uh, no, That's I funny. really enjoyed this movie from start to finish. Um, I, yeah, I'm a I'm a sucker for movies like this. Uh, the underdogs, a subversion of stereotypes, uh, hidden humor in things. Um, I I I love it. I, I liked this movie from start to finish. I don't want to get into like favorite parts yet since we're not at that part of the show. Um, but yeah, no, this movie had everything that I wanted. It had a great soundtrack. It mm. One might call ah. it a dope hey. soundtrack. Um, and oh, we'll talk about Jesus, that later too. Mm-hmm. Um, Josh, you're at five. I just want to throw that out there. I'm, I'm going to hit like a good like 30. No, I'm just okay. kidding. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, Fair get to the end and see where we are. Yeah. So uh, there we go. Um, bef- so I want I want to ask this question real quick. 
Had anyone seen this film before getting ready for this episode? No. Nope. Not at all. Just you, I think. I'm yeah. telling y'all, y'all don't listen to my suggestion. I'm saying, but no. I don't listen I to you because so you're many- always yelling. <laughs> you, yeah. I've I just watched so you many out. things you, you. you tell me to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a comic book that Tom was like, you will like this, read this. And it's been sitting in my room for like, uh, I think Almost a year, a year now. at least. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I don't really have time for this, but okay. I started oh, Supernatural so- for you. I started <laughs> Doom Patrol for you. Like it's, we're getting there. Anyway, I, I still have some of your DVDs here. Anyways, mm. so mm. everyone <laughs> listening, That's where um, we're at. I got to make a quick shout out. Um, when I first moved down here, I moved down here with two guys from my from my university uh, who, you know, we were the you know, we we're pioneering the industry. We were going out and getting PA jobs and they were on producer routes and um, also writing director. And uh, I got to shout out to my producer for Half a Glass, my film. Uh, that I work with most of the people here. Sorry, Kayla. Um, next time, next time. Next time. Uh, <laughs> next we, got time. Our, we got her on PAs. It's fine. Yeah. Um, Chris, Chris Madrigal. He, um, he, he's, he was like, he was like the most Tom, let's, let's hang out. Let's do bro things. And he was like, let's watch this movie. And I was like, sure. I was so like, not, I don't, I don't care. Like you're already like, I, I, I live with you. <laughs> like, I don't want to watch, I don't need to watch this movie with you. But then we watched it and I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty good. And then it was one of those like sleepers, like where, you know, you just go on the rest of your life. And then you wake up and like, oh my God, that was such a wonderful film. Holy <laughs> shit. Um, so I never really appreciated it at first. And then as mm. time went on, as time went on, I was like, Man, that's a really good man. That's a really good movie. And you know, you think about like other films or like you know coming of age stories. They don't really touch on the outside world. There's very much this bubble that they live in. And this film very much touches on like we understand the outside world exists too. And that's like the wonderful thing that I loved about this film. And uh, I remember, I just remember Corey being like, "I really like this movie." Blah, blah. He was talking about something. I'm like, "You gotta watch Dope. You gotta watch Dope, man." And uh, yeah, so uh, I haven't even I don't even remember what I was talking about. Yeah, I don't even know. But I would always just say, "Court dope man." Um, and uh, you know, I this this just this movie makes me sad. I bet you it was talking about uh, Spider Verse, maybe. But and then I was I like, think- Shameek Moore was great as Miles. He was like, "You gotta see him in Dope." Uh, yeah, I was like, okay. Maybe that. But uh, like, also, just like um, this make- movie makes me sad because Rick Famuyiwa is not going to be directing the Flash. And I'm like, oh, what we could have had. What we could have had, babe. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed this movie a lot. And uh, that's it. Um, so we'll move on to the next segment. If that didn't give the complete spoilers of all our ratings. Uh, which are going to be our brief synopsis and our production. So I'll be doing the brief synopsis. And let me, let me, let me, let me get this all up in my face, y'all. Okay, <laughs> so the brief synopsis by me. This is all spoiler free, baby. High school senior Malcolm and his friends Jib and Diggy bond over 90s hip-hop culture, their studies, and playing music in their own band. A chance encounter with a drug dealer named Dom lands Malcolm and company at the dealer's nightclub birthday party. When the scene turns violent, they flee with ecstasy and that Dom secretly hid in Malcolm's backpack. A wild adventure ensues as the youths try to evade armed thugs who want the stash. And then comedy ensues. Mm. And so now the production... Uh, production. W- yes. Uh, it is distributed by Open Road Films, who did Snowden, Spotlight, and Chef. Uh, the director is Rick Famuyiwa, uh, who did episodes of The Mandalorian, The Pilot of the Ch- Chai, The Pilot of the Chai, and uh, Brown Sugar. Uh, the producers are Forrest Whitaker, who did Repentance, Powder Blue, Chasing Poppy, Nina Yang Bongovi, Bongovi. Uh, Fruitvale Station, Roxanne, Roxanne, sorry to bother you. And the writer is Rick Femiua, who did The Wood, Talk to Me, Our Family Wedding. The cast. The cast. Shamik Moore from uh, The Watsons Go to Birmingham, House of Pain, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Mm. Uh, Tony Revolori from The Grand Budapest Hotel, Spider-Man Homecoming, The Fifth Wave, Kiersey Clemens from Zack Snyder's Justice League, Transparent mm. and Antebellum. Uh, Kimberly Elise from Diary of a Mad Black Woman, Ad Astra, John Q. Chanel Iman from Mad Families, Burning Bright, music videos for Usher, Beyonce, and The Weeknd. Uh, Keith Stanfield from Sorry to Bother You, Knives Out, and Short Term 12. Blake Anderson from Workaholics, Game Over Man, Voltron, Legendary Defender. Mm-hmm. 
Zoe Kravitz from Mad Max Fury Road, X-Men First Class, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, and ASAP Rocky uh, from Marvel Avengers Academy, Zoolander 2, and Monster. Um, This was released on January 24th of 2015 at Sundance and June uh, 19th in 2015 in the U.S., um, the runtime is 103 minutes. The budget was seven million, and it uh, grossed 18 million. Um, the Rotten Tomato score is 89 percent from critics, from 158 users, and 83 percent audience score from 34,014 users. Whoa! So a few people. <laughs> yeah, a few, a few people. people enjoyed the film. I want to do saying. two things real quick about those production. The reason why the way they are for people who are listening, because I've seen the comments, I've seen the comments. Open Road uh, distributed this nationally through America, and Universal through worldwide. And mm. The production company is uh, I Am Other, or I'm with Other which is Pharrell's company. And Keith Stanfeld, as most people know, is Lakeith Stanfeld. Yeah. But in this film, he's credited as Keith Stanfeld. Keith Stanfeld. So, just want to make Thank sure you all the know. Clarity, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Some people, some people, some people. I saw comments. that credit and I was like, oh, he didn't go yeah. by. Yeah, he did, it, it says as Keith Stanfeld. I was like, oh, because I remember seeing that name. I was like, who that? And then I was like, <laughs> looked on the IMDb. I was like, oh, but what? Oh, so. Yeah. Oh. Did he change? Did, he, did oh. that come around? That change come around with like Atlanta, I guess? I don't know. I don't know if it was um, he had to go by the, a different name because of maybe pay or something like that or oh, yeah. something else. But yeah. Um, so now we'll go into now full spoilers, right? Spoiler full, food, full Lots city. Lots of spoilers. Spoiler. We can't, I can't word today. Um, favorite parts. Favorite parts, our favorite characters, our qualms, and then finally our rating. Do Who wants to go first? Josh, it looks like you were running go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll looks go. like you want to go. It looks uh, like you wow. want to go. <laughs> um, I love one of the initial scenes when uh, he he realizes that he has the the drugs and they're they're in like the band room, and he's talking to the 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 dealer on the phone, and they start going sandwich. into this tangent the about lunch and the, the bologna, bologna sandwich. sandwich with cheese. And he's you like, "How did you find my, my sandwich?" But my favorite yeah. part is the the use of "find my iPhone" in this film. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's pretty just great. Like, Duh. Like Steve Jobs is a genius. Like I just, yeah. <laughs> I just love that <laughs> shit. Uh, for me, for me, uh, it had to be like I don't have a top favorite part. I liked a lot of this. The waking up the next day to the party montage was pretty great. Oh, uh, with uh, Oreo blowing up. Yeah, and oh, yeah. all the different clips and like bringing back the news guy. You know, they're now quite, oh, he's cake? become he's become a meme because How people at the party pancake? are like, eat my pound cake. And then they play like the clip. And like the <laughs> fact that in universe, that guy became a meme already is fantastic. Uh, I love that little world building bit. But yeah, that that whole montage and how they did it with the different windows and stuff was well done. Really well done. Um, one a lot as- of information at once. <laughs> one aspect that I really enjoyed was just um, overall costuming and wardrobe. Mm-hmm. It was oh, actually yeah. very, very like colorful everyone was like really stylish it looked like they went to shopnate.com <laughs> <laughs> bought a bunch of like yeah. that shout out to our friends clothing company but it looked like he styled them yeah in a good way um and uh yeah i really enjoyed it just because like i think it's very easy uh to you know like okay these are the nerds and these are the geeks but like geeks also could be very stylish and you know i think if we weren't at home right now, we'd be pretty stylish. <laughs> um, but it was kind of like, oh yeah, they they got style and you know they have their own thing that what they're doing. And oh, but also, you know, it just it comes into like how their personalities are and like they they play that off at the very beginning with a little bit of subversion with um with Dig. Um and uh also at the very end it comes in with um Malcolm's hair. And I was like those kind of things were like Clothing does create identity, and especially I think in black community. So, like how that, like you, you would think it was like kind of more of like a window dressing, but then it becomes a, like an identity piece in the film, which I I, I enjoyed. So yeah, I mean, okay. I watched some interviews and and just through through other mediums and media at the time, 2015 was like a big shift in black nerd culture in that community. Like mm. it's not wide. It wasn't widely except like white nerd culture back in the mid two thousands was like peak Seth Cohen. Like finally it was cool to like comic books, stuff like that. Um, That's why their band is Oreo. 
but yeah, but even like even into I mean, listening to uh, you know, Childish Gambino, even in the 2013, 2014, he has a whole song about like the reason I'm doing this is because I didn't have someone who spoke my language of being a, a black nerd from from a family and stuff like that. And so they it was kind out, of they shut him ahead. out in the beginning of the film. I know. <laughs> I they were that. saying like we we do we we study we get ready for college we don't we do, do things that white kids love which yeah is we like Donald we Glover. like manga uh, and we like Donald Glover but it was it's it's I think it's an important thing to put on film at that time especially it was like these are these are the cool kids now it's 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 it's, it's okay to be this this person. Caitlin, I loved how they interconnected pretty much everything. Oh yeah. Um, Lily was connected to. Oh my William. gosh, I can't remember his. Yeah. William. Yeah. Uh, I was only thinking of Samo, um, <laughs> and how like Samo's connected, and how AJ is uh, the the like guy the, he's the, going to for college fathers. admissions, yeah. and the freaking godfather of the drug running in in Inglewood, basically. Yep. Um, like it, like it just. And how they wrapped so many different genres of things in there. That was like a heist. It was like social coming of commentary. Age, it was crime coming drama. Of age. Yeah. It was crime drama. It was like, oh man, romance. It, it just, yeah. But but they did such a good job. Like, um, it, it almost felt like you don't have your footing in the beginning of it because you're like, wait, what am what am what is this going for? And the second he said something about like. If Neil deGrasse Neil deGrasse Tyson like explained Ice Cube or something like that, this I was like, "Oh, that's the whole movie! <laughs> like that's yeah. that's what this is." And then it gives you that like perspective of like what you're what you're experiencing, mm-hmm. and it just it's just it's a little chef's kiss there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it has fun, and that's the thing where it's like, yeah, to your point, like it has a lot of fun doing all the things where it's like. That's the thing where I I really like I start drawing the line of like these coming of age high school stories of like I've never been kissed or went to my prom or blah you know like I want to have a you know good 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 day I'm like oh my god but like this one talks about like the the hood traps the the like worrying about like I don't want to get involved in crime but like you're at risk you're you're at the age of at risk but also like. Your, your the relationship between your parents and that how that's changing. You're budding, wanting to find romantic interests, and also the stress of school and in interviews, and and how your future is literally determined in two years. Like it, those those are things that I, I I love that pressure of. But also like one thing I one of my favorite moments is when he has to get uh the Bitcoin exchange at the black market, and he's with the bad guy. Oh man, and the guy's <laughs> the like. The guy's like hit me in the face and it's kind of like, I know who you are. You're a guy who doesn't give a fuck. And it's this final like He's metamorph. It's like the crack open of the pupa where like Malcolm like has to come push, come to shove. He has to push. And mm-hmm. uh, like it later on gets compounded with like um, uh, the the bully, like Keith Stanfeld's character who like tries to take his shoes again and takes the money. And there's this really intense moment. And you think about that because it's like so far – Whenever we've seen this gun, like one time was during, uh, you know, during the nightclub sequence, and it's like Shoot really it, intense. Yeah. And the second time you see it, it's kind of like, oh my god, I have this thing, I don't know what to do. And then, you know, they later on use it, and it's a very, very important big moment. And like, he's just like his it's, friends are being like, it's okay, yeah, it's, it's okay. Right. And I just you know, he's can still I talk shut to, up. Talk about that scene real quick because yeah. it's yeah. actually it's on my list of favorite parts, and one of my favorite, one of my favorite aspects of that scene of when he pulls the gun on the, on the bullies it is that there, the depth of it, because, um, bug, uh, Keith, Keith's uh, character looks heartbroken because it's like this kid, I mean, bullying in his mind, is just like, it's all in good fun, but it's like, he realizes in the instance of where Malcolm has had to go. Do you know what I mean? Like his, he looks heartbroken. Yeah. And it was just like, like he did it to him. He pushed yeah, him that far. Like he's like, oh no, Malcolm's oh no, Malcolm is is pointing a gun at me. A kid that I, I don't know, maybe I'm reading too far into the scene, but it's just like I just saw some heartbreak on Bug's face and I was like, Yeah, that he it's hitting him too of what Malcolm kind of has had to go through. Um mm-hmm. not knowing the circumstances of their adventure, so to speak, of what they've been through, but um Another aspect of this movie that I really love is I love the kind of 
kind of the circular conversations, so to speak, or just kind of like the smart conversations, like slippery uh, slope. when yeah, when mm-hmm. slippery slope, <laughs> cryplexia, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> when he's talking to Dom about like '90s culture, and Dom's like a- again subverting that um, that expectation of like, what are you talking about? This came out this year. This came in out 80, this year. Yeah, in '88, and, the, and like. 2000. It's like it's a just, really good conversation. Yeah. Like they're both very well like, equipped to you? be talking about yeah. what they're talking about. Yeah. 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 So I just, I loved those Which is why he likes him. That's why Dom yeah. likes him. Yeah. No, I mean, to that point, I'd like that there, you see in the first act, you know, you really kind of see the social dynamic of like where Malcolm is, is on the bottom of the, of the, you know, food chain. And then there's, there's Bug and then there's Dom and then there's, you know, who Malcolm wa- needs to, like, impress is uh, AJ, Jacoby. And it's just, like, all these level of, like, what the what the hood is, what Inglewood has to offer in terms of a future. And I think that's what uh, the director really wanted to to touch upon because, you know, getting ready for this episode, I watched a lot of his Sundance interviews, and he talked a lot about, like, how his first films and his voice were, like, set in Inglewood. And that's how he grew up. You know, he grew up, like, not feeling really, like, what was cool or what was expected. You know, he was just... He was not that kind of black guy. You know, he was mm-hmm. a different kind and he never fit into those social norms. Um, but he luckily had friends like Dick and Jib. So it's like, it's, it's interesting to see that like now, yeah, like this point of view of like, oh, this is the world. So. Oh my um, God. My brain just like <clears throat> expanded on a single point of like seeing that hierarchy and like knowing that Jacoby is involved in the boys club yeah. uh, and stuff. But it made me think about the principal mm-hmm. because the if if the principal keeps sending people who are trying to get college admissions to Jacoby over the last several years, which is very likely the case, does that mean that he's been like I pressured think, by Jacoby to keep sending them there? Well, I think not many kids from that school are trying to get into Harvard. Yeah. True. I, I, I would say to that point, though, Caitlin— you know, the, I forget, was it like a district manager or whoever who was like having the news station was like, we have these guys who were in the Google, you know, science fair. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Just like looks at them. He gives them a thumbs up. That's like, Rick Fox. Yeah. <laughs> not from the Lakers. Very yeah. familiar. Uh, not yeah, knowing. He was on the Lakers for a long time. Oh. Uh, not knowing. He's in like, holes. Yes. Oh. Uh, not knowing that like what they're doing is like, they're literally selling drugs in that, in that science room. Yeah. But it's like this underbelly of Filling the school p- system. Pills full of Molly. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's this underbelly of the school system of like they don't realize like that it's a it's a it's a battle of survival. You either you're going to college or you're becoming part of the boys club. You know, like you're you're dom on the street, but we haven't even seen what it's like to be a Harvard guy. And so yeah. like there's that unknown, but then like everything else just boils down to like you're you're back in the hood and you can't escape it. So yeah. Um, other favorite parts? Um, uh, the soundtrack. Mm. Uh, I really yes. enjoyed yeah. the set. There was one particular one particular song just sent me back to 1998. Corn freak on a leash. I was like, <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Past Josh <laughs> poked its head up and was like, huh? I'm here. Huh? I'm here. <laughs> Where are I'm we? Still Hollywood here. video. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god! Yeah, the soundtrack. I I loved. Um, there's there's a lot about this movie that yeah. I really enjoyed. Oh. The, the end credits, when the, that, dance. the, the, the dances, all these ninety dances. Should make more learned so all good. those like killed all those dances. He yeah. really did though. He needs, he needs to get more roles. There's a tutorial that he sh- did on YouTube of how to do all the dances as promotional for this. I oh think I God. remember those. I think I remember those when it, when it first came out. Um, so we're gonna learn some of those before we put out this uh, episode, right? <laughs> for me, it's the thesis at the end. It's like mm. the, the thesis of the film, and it's it's explained to the audience through his application to Harvard. Student A, um, student B. The student A, student B bit was really. Uh, I mean, after all, you see, obviously, it hits a lot harder than if he had just said that at the beginning of the film. You'd be like, yeah, I guess really it's a good idea, yeah. But after seeing Malcolm's journey, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's on that's on me. That's on me, guys. Um, Um, But also the the, putting on the hood right right at the very end. The Trayvon Martin Mm -hmm. dig. Uh, Yeah, I I watched some interviews where they talked about that, too. And a lot of people have been like, was that intentional? And Shamik, before the interviewer could even get the answer, like, is that intentional? He's like, yes, that's yeah, that's we're trying to send you a message of what's it. Because this was three years later. And I'm like Tom said, they probably shot it in 24. 13, 13, meaning it was a, only less than a year after the Trayvon Martin incident. So um, 
yeah, it's he's like, yeah, I want you. He goes, when you watch this movie twenty years from now, it's not going to change. That message is there for a reason. That's that's it's a, it's there as a reminder. Um, so like that, knowing that, especially when you put it in the context, Tom, of that it was probably written that same year and filmed the next one is like makes it exponentially larger. Very intentional. Uh, really good cinematography. Really good. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Imagery. I I, I use me. Imagery. I think that might be my favorite uh, breaking of the fourth wall. Mm-hmm. My absolute favorite because I think oh, the it, end. It, yeah, it was it very was intentional. The whole, very the whole student, a student, and, and it thing. gets compounded with the very beginning. It's like you know you're really arrogant if you think you're going to go to Harvard. Harvard, and then it's just like, man, go fuck yourself. You know, and, and that's like there. There's a little bit of a level for me because I I won't say I wasn't encouraged by a lot of my professors in school, but I wasn't as encouraged as I. Th- thought I should have been and that was a thing where it's like you know a lot of people will say like oh you think you sh- you're you should be able to get this thing but you're not you're not that person and it's just like oh my god and it's it's that very validating feeling of like man fuck you I made a hundred thousand dollars in, in business on an online thing in my last week of you know high school and it's like yeah and he survived a lot of shit and like there's something that I really liked also that kind of foreshadowed it too because like this happens a little bit after that first conversation with the principal, but on that phone call with the sandwiches and the cheese, um, mm-hmm. the drug dealer says like, and then you'll go back to living your life and you'll have hell of a story. And like, that's the thing where it's like, there, I, you know, I've been through that and I'm sure the listeners have been through that where, you know, you're writing your personal statement and it's just like, I don't know, what do you say? And like, for me, you know, like it was like, we'll talk about your Asian experience. I'm like, oh my God. Like I am much more than just my ethnicity, but also that's mm-hmm. part of it. So I can't ignore it, but it's not like this sob story about it. And so like, you know, Malcolm talks about, it. it's like, what do you want me to do? talk about? How I never met my dad and all that stuff. And like, that's the one thing I really like too, is that like, there is a, an, like not an emptiness that he has, but he understands like, I never had a relationship with my father, but mm-hmm. that's okay. Like his life has just been with his mom and then his friends. And yeah. like, that's normal because that is normal. Like you don't get a chance of like, oh, well I missed that. I don't have father's day. It's like, well, you never had a father's day. So how can you miss something you never had? Yeah. And he has a great relationship with his mom. Yeah. And, uh, his, his mom friends, is you know. so cool. Yeah. Um, she's so uh, cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, there, I, there's, a, there's a lot of things I, I like. I mean, okay. One thing, uh, one of my favorite jokes is, you know, is, is, is Blake Anderson, uh, being Will. Oh. And science being slapped. Kid. Well, that being slapped, you know, wanting to say the N word and not knowing why, even though it's all in familial fun. And, you know, I'll say it like that or on the internet. It's like you know, a lot of people think they're too familiar and they think they could say it, but they need Kiersey Clemens just slap them on the face. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, sorry, reflex, reflex. Um, but uh, I like I, the joke that I really loved. And I think it's like the, 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 the dumb boy conversation in, in, in the camp where it was just like, I was like, I've only had. Oral sex and anal sex. It's uh, not a question if I'm still a virgin, but am I gay? And they're like, oh shit. They're like, mind blown. <laughs> I, I thought that was what? just like a funny, like, wow, what a weird technicality. <laughs> what a weird tangent, my friend. It's it's definitely of the sleepaway camp conversations that of of the youth mm-hmm. that yeah. I've, you know, back in the day, like 2000, what would that have been for me? Like 2001, 2000. That was definitely like the. Oh damn, he's yeah. so smart. It's a, and then you grow up and you're like, that's the dumbest thing. This is the dumbest thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love how like the, he is so smart and he got accepted to like the best college. But then like he's hanging out with high schoolers. Mm-hmm. He's hanging out with high schoolers. And like they treat him like 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 he's just like some dude. It's like, hey, we need your help. And I'm like, wow, what kind of like and that's kind of the fun world that this lives in where it's like it's the Friday, right? The that everyone in the neighborhood knows each other. And so it's like, oh, let's go to this yeah. person. Oh, let's go to that. And I person. love the I love the flip that it wasn't that he made a dumb mistake Mm -hmm. because Blake's character didn't, but it gave Malcolm the idea to put the mistake in the coding. Yeah. That reveal. That's where he's like, no, I'll hand it. Cause when they first show that scene, he's like, do I look like someone who would make a dumb mistake? And you're like, fuck yeah, you do. And he's like, no, I'll handle the exchange. And then it shows it back again. And you're like, oh, he's not. He, that dude's really smart. He, he That's Kaiser Soze is the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, no, no, I'll <laughs> handle it. And then he's like, I'm going to put that dumb mistake in the coding so that if he ever tries, they'll come back to him. Like, loved it. I thought that was so wonderful. Um, oh. uh, there was a small moment uh, when Dom is calling him from jail. And he, calls, mm-hmm. and he says something along uh. the lines of, listen up, McFly. I just love mm-hmm. that he called him McFly just kind of like, 
keeping with his like kind of nerdy. Yeah, because it's called DeLorean. Fly. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's I, just like a constant barrage of favorite moments. I mean, the favorite moments is the whole movie. Yeah. So, like the way that they handle, like. Oh. How things are are handled in the community, how things are talked about, their relationships, how those on. things change. Oh, oh my yeah. god, getting puked on when he thinks he's gonna have sex for the first time. Like, oh, it, oh, like, Lily, oh, I gotta pee, I gotta pee. And she wakes up and starts hitting him. Um, yeah. I also, I also love Jib in the nightclub drinking the most, throwing up that, and then downing and still drinking. Because oh. I will say like this, as an Asian homie. You know, I mean, like that's that's a that's a thing that you know, like us brown people, we like try to like, oh, we gotta be with the cool people, and we gotta try to grow it up. But then, like, Tom, no, it just reminded can't. me of you making fun of me at. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> I don't really drink anymore, but back in when we used to work together and stuff, we'd go to like on the weekends, we'd go out to like these bars and stuff like this, and I would drink, and then Tom would just say Corey would just disappear for like five minutes, and I would and then know. he would come back, and he would look so much better. And I would just go like puke and then come back and be like, <laughs> all right, I feel so much better now. Let's get back to it. <laughs> oh and then you start God. drinking again. You because drinking. I'm not one of those people who's just going to like baby it. I'm not going to sit there and be like, I feel so sick all night. I'm like, let's get this over with and then we'll reassess. If I'm good, I'll keep going. But if not, those I'll are the lucky the times. Night. Those yeah, are the lucky There are times. times where I did it and I was like, I got to go home. This yeah. is it. <laughs> Corey has been there when I had my to go night. But mo- I would say a majority of the time, Corey would disappear for five minutes and then he'd come back and be like, you good? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. Right. And I just, <laughs> I just know because I've been down these roads before. <laughs> so, He'd be um, like, you throw up? Yeah, that's I'm fine. <laughs> I, I also just like that Jib also offered that level of doubt in every scene he was in of like, no, I don't want to do this. And so like, it wasn't always like, let's continue to go on these things without consequence. Mm-hmm. You know, there's always that yeah. level of like, oh my God. Josh, you're going to say something? Uh, oh, the, my, my last uh, favorite scene is the bus dream sequence. Mm. Oh, when all the God. characters are coming so in, and just when he's walking to his seat, Even though, the kid too, it's got, so beautiful. Who got killed in the killed, beginning? With the yeah. Kind of yes. there and- yeah, it's it's yeah, it's his whole life ahead of him, you know. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm gonna say like this: Yo, everyone watching who wants to be a filmmaker, or wants to analyze films, I'm telling you, when you watch f- sequences where the character is on a thing that's moving them and they're not physically having to move anymore. What is that telling you y'all that like life is moving him. He's not moving by himself. He's not an active player anymore. Like it's important. Um, so it's, it's symbolism. Good. Oh man. Okay. Seven bucks. Symbology. Shout out seven for- bucks, by the way. <laughs> great. Cause seven bucks. Yeah. Um, my pound cake. Diggy at, uh, I love Diggy flashing the, um, the, at the nightclub bouncer, when they're trying the gatekeeper to, the, the guardian yeah, yeah I love that moment so much because I feel like in movies that are doing the same thing but not as for lack of a better word intelligently is like they have a crass thing that happens to someone else and it's usually at their detriment mm-hmm. like at the other person's and in this one Diggy is like the, hey I'm gonna do whatever I want yeah. I wanna see all the boobs like whatever but like the crass thing was done from her end, so it like made it more like you, you're not like grossed out by it. Yeah, she has the power in like every scene she, that she. It's it's fun because we get that release, or I get that catharsis of like a woman being able to objectify other people, mm-hmm. and yeah. we don't we don't get to revel in that a lot of times her, as as men or as as dig, a, an a, American audience. Justin Bieber was yeah. So on point. Oh my god! For, 20, for 2015, remember what he looked like in 2015. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, like I, I really enjoyed like how she was yeah. always trying to mac on some girls in a club, or she's the one that's getting the lap dances, and it's like, yeah, this is this is fun. This is wonderful. Like, yeah, the pray, why the, the gay that way sequence? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like looking someone up and down while yeah. they're like, I was just looking like, at her oh legs my god. And stuff. Yeah, you and get like, to have so the the I'll woman have this. That's the, fine. that gaze. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, I so feel like good. we could do w- any, yes. one last favorite part and then we move on to the favorite characters. I mean, I kind of said all of mine. Yeah, I said all mine. Um, um, I'll do one quick tidbit for everyone listening. Uh, fun thing when I was watching this film in 2015 was that the high school that this takes place is across the street from the high school I lived in. Or the, the yeah, across the lived in a high school? From, <laughs> I lived in a high school across from the apartments that I lived in. Oh. Um, the high school was across from the apartments. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the, the Jimmy Burgers that they eat at in 
quote unquote Inglewood on Sentinella is not there. It's over here where I live, which is <laughs> off of uh, uh, Langersham. So um, I, I saw the brick walls. I'm like, wow, that's only the first opening sequence. I'm like, ha, that's, oh, that's her spot. Wow. That's, that's her spot. So uh, now and I've never eaten a burger there actually. So now we I should have to. now. It's good. Now uh, I have chili cheese I do. I'll say, I'll say one more. Six flags. Oh, oh, I love oh, the twist of so cute. her not showing up and be, he's like, you're supposed to go to prom with me. She's like, no, I said, I didn't miss prom. I missed mm-hmm. going to six flags. I loved that bit. I loved that she didn't show up for prom and that because like the whole time she didn't show up, I was like, she said she'd think about it. Like she never agreed to it. And I, I think that's fine. But then coming through with the Six Flags thing was was pretty great. The, the one thing I like about that little romance, too, is also because she's not an idiot. And it's not this like I have a mental superiority over you or an intellectual superiority over you. And there's this level of like, you know, most of the time you see like a dumb, hot woman who just falls in love with some loser. And it's because Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't know anyone like that. But what she likes about Malcolm is that he's honest and that he's a real person and not like trying to flaunt something. Like whenever someone says like, oh, are you, are you, you know, this was a crab motherfucker. And he's like, I'm just Malcolm. And he's like, are you real? Are you not? He's like, I'm just Malcolm. And he says that, he says that multiple times. Like, I'm just Malcolm. You know, where Dom's like, Hey, yo, tell her I said this. And it's like, why don't you just talk to me? You know, like, and Malcolm gets to do those things. Back and forth scene was pretty great. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, putting the heart on the sleeve and having Malcolm be this character who, who gets to be honest and true in Mm -hmm. a world where being not who you are is important. And then he ends up finding like a deeper version of who he is. He ends up just growing, not putting on a new facade. And that allows him to like outsmart the antagonist at the very end, which is like, so I was waiting for Josh to be like, oh, comeuppance, comeuppance. <laughs> I love that. Oh, well, yeah. 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 Oh, so, um, favorite, favorite characters? Favorite characters. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Let's do three favorite characters. Oh. Now, one, at least one, has to not be from the original trio. Oh, okay. That makes it, that makes it harder. Yeah. Okay. So it has okay. to be three, and it can't all three be. Uh, Malcolm, main. Diggy, and Jib. Yeah, that's fair. That's, right. I think that's more than fair. I got, go I got mine. Okay. Uh, my first two are Malcolm and Dig, mm-hmm. and my side character who I already had listed is As- is Austin Jacoby. I just oh. thought that I love the villain. I loved him because he was he was kind of a caricature. I mean, he yeah. had this like he Little almost Blake check villain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He, he almost kind of had like a godfather. Like he had this very like. Oh. Yeah, he did. Oh, but I okay. like I loved his metaphorically speaking of like a little Amazon with CDs and blah blah. Yeah. blah. It's like you don't buy CDs. It's like oh whatever you That's buy. That's the name something. of an artist. I just he was just a caricature, and he was like he was evil bad guy dude. And like evil I like bad guy that. man. Is. I'm a bad guy. But the kind of like the steps they took to kind of like build up this character yeah. like, made you really realize it's like he comes from Inglewood and then all of a sudden he's like from Harvard and then now he has a business in Hollywood, in Beverly Hills. Yeah. And I mean, Malcolm, it just, he speaks for himself and Dig speaks for herself. It just, every scene, I mean, it's hard not to pick the, the whole three, but I just, just every that. scene, they, <laughs> it was just excellently, excellently mm-hmm. done. Every time Dig like had like a, Especially in the Lexia um, conversation oh, when she <laughs> hard uh, sees where she just like she she was like you mean this and she just kind of like she just does these like little laughs to you herself. mean base like, to base like, scenario yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Base. anyway uh, that's mine uh, who wants to go next or me I'll go I next think Tom I'll go does next. I'll go next uh, mine's Diggy and then Malcolm and then Will. Um, Will Will is sh- 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 Samo Samo Oh Samo Samo Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah it, It's it's <laughs> Caitlin's like Oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah, like yeah, Diggy yeah. more I than Malcolm I cannot remember William he, at all he, You experience it all through Malcolm So like Obviously like you, he, He's the hero He's in every Almost every scene But Diggy Steals almost every scene she's Every in. single so one So that's why She's my favorite um, And also like It's a character I don't think we've seen And that's why I really really enjoy it um, and, and Will, 
I just like he asks the dumb but also hard questions, and he's like, "I, you know, I want to have sex with a black girl," and it happens to be um, the Lily. Lily, Lily, and I'm just like, "Oh my goodness!" God. And he, that's why she asked Malcolm he's that smart same question. Dumb. Yeah, I know. yeah. Um, <laughs> you're so stupid. But how did you do that? But like, he he also comes through, and it's like again, it's not. The tatted and yatted guy. It's the guy who's really smart, who knows what Bitcoin Crypto is. Cryptocurrency. And, yeah. yeah. And so, like, I really love that. And, like, he becomes kind of like this Virgil. Like, I'm going to help you through this world of, you know, the black market. And so, like, you think yeah. Dom would be that guy. And it's going to be, like, this weird, tragic story. But it's like, no, it's Will. And, you know, he's he's still trying to be cool. And also, like, him and his weed, you know, thoughts of, like, oh, single malt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Like in a giant thing. So, yeah, I thought he was really enjoyable, but that's me. Kaylin, who you got? Oh, man. I know Diggy's my my absolute Diggy's fave. number one? Diggy's number one um, for all the reasons listed previously. Um, I really did enjoy, um, oh, my goodness, what is her name? Nakia. G-E-D. Nakia. Nakia, right. yeah. Um, the romantic interest? Yeah, the Zoe romantic Kravitz. interest. Yeah, she but. was just... I think it's Nakia. I love that yes, she Nakia. was like in all of these situations with all of these dangerous people, but was still navigating it and being very like, this is what I want in my life. And mm-hmm. if you are trying to mess with that, like, leave. You're out. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, man, I'm my third. I feel so torn. Um, I feel like I'm going to do a, a cop out and say Malcolm, but I'm teetering on saying Malcolm's mom. But Malcolm. All right. Um, for me, it's Malcolm, number one. I think, Shemitah's I mean, wonderful. again, I he's get so why good. this was like a breakout role for him because he's he's wonderful. And I want to see, I, I for those of you who don't know, I fan cast him as my Iceman in a, if when they reboot uh, X-Men. Some, my Static someday. Shock, Michael B. Jordan. You hear me? Yeah. Um, <gasps> next is Diggy for all, again, copy paste all the reasons yeah, why. Yeah, Diggy. I think she's. Diggy, Diggy. That if she owned that role, I can't wait to see that actress in more things. And my third character, strangely enough, is actually the narrator, Forrest Whitaker. Oh, oh, yeah. I all thought right. I thought the use of narration in yes. this was really well done. I thought Forrest nailed it, uh, and everything the narrator said was was nothing was wasted. No line was a wasted line. Um, yeah. And I remember I was like trying to figure it out at first. I was like. I know that voice. And then I looked, I was like, it's Forrest Whitaker. That's why. Goo goo gaga. Goo goo gaga. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's Malcolm Diggy and the narrator. Okay. Uh, right. Well, now we'll nice, go nice, on nice. to Qualms. Quimmy Qualms, what things we could have taken away from the film or something. I don't know what a qualm is. But so who wants to go first? Who's got qualms for this film? It's funny because okay. I knew we go, Joe, go. Joe, no, you you started Joe, talking. Joe, yeah, go ahead, Caitlin. What'd you say? Oh. Go ahead, Caitlin. I was saying I knew that this part was coming, but I still haven't thought of anything. Like nothing you comes have to mind. Anything. Yeah, so that's people yeah, do I don't that on have this show. Any, yeah, that's true. I don't really have any qualms. What? I do that so quite a bit. Now Josh can say the things he was going to say. Now Josh can say he doesn't have any qualms either. My only a uh, qualm, and it was my only experience. With this film, the 5.1 mix seemed heavily reliant on the subwoofer. Like, mm. uh, coming in and, with that audio qualm, Josh. Uh, it was just, Proud. it was very, maybe she just watched it like, was the like us. <laughs> and I watched like other, I've watched other films on this, this system, and I haven't had that issue at all until it was, and it kicked, it kicked in and it was real hard. Um, and it was overwhelming at some points. Like I had to turn my subwoofer off. Um, and I don't, I don't know if maybe it was just the way that, um, cause sometimes what happens is the way that an Apple TV will deliver it. I, I don't know all of the things that they're doing, but they're either summing it down to stereo or they are not, or may, I don't know how it works on that end. Uh Oh, so, <laughs> way, to go, so, way to go. Way to go. Way to go. Siri. Way to go. Apple. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> they heard you're like, what'd you say, bitch? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't really know how that the delivery system actually works. I know how it works from a post-production standpoint, but I don't know how they're delivering it to me. And maybe it got mixed up in the way that it was delivered to me. Like, 
just the way that it it did it. I don't know, but uh, sure. it was it was hardcore. Uh, yeah, those are my only qualms. Corey, uh, uh, yeah, I only have one, mm. Um, mm. but it's uh, it's a conversation piece. So not really. I mean, it's I want to talk about it <laughs> because uh, the movie runs at one forty three. I think, if yes. I remember correctly. 143? Yeah, hour 43. Hour well, one three. hour and three minutes. One hour and three minutes? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, 103 minutes. I'm sorry. Got it. Yes. Not so, 63 minutes, but a hundred and f- uh, but 103 minutes. So, so it's, it's an like hour and 43 minutes. Two. You are right. It's an hour and 43 minutes. Okay, so like <laughs> so I said, it's an hour point. and 43 minutes. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, We're and uh, I could have done with two hours of this. And I think what I would have used, not even two hours, maybe even an hour and, and 50. So short. I could have, could have, it's an hour and 43. I'm sorry, my bad. Jesus Christ. Longer. I'm, yes, longer. Can I fucking talk? <laughs> no. Um, no, so it's an hour and 43 minutes. I could have done with an hour and 50. What I wanted is more of Zoe's character with Malcolm to earn the scene where they fight. What I think could have happened is during all of their... We're, ma- we're making moves, montage at the school, that kind of stuff. He could have been studying with her throughout that and then had this moment of like, why do you keep coming here? Is it because, you know, Dom, Dom sent you? Him. Because for me, it felt like sh- I loved that relationship. I loved her character. I think Zoe Kravitz did it really well. And I just wanted more of building between the two of them to earn that. For me, that fight felt very... Like, we need conflict here. And this is the first time they've ever hung out. And for me, it, I, I, as a, for a story, I could have used more between the two of them before that happened. Because I really liked that relationship. I think uh, it would have been nice to see that cultivated more. And the loss of that fight would have felt stronger for me. Um, but that's my only qualm. Yeah, I could see that. Um... I think for me, um, I think I wanted more AJ in there, a little bit more of his presence, because I think we only got two scenes with him. Um, So, like, it kind of felt like a little bit like the film has it where we're kind of running in circles and things keep happening to the character. Obviously, he's trying to combat it with his own intelligence. But, like, uh, this final, like, you know, am I going to win felt like a like a more of a mystery. It felt more like the parlor room scene of like, this is how I beat you. And I was like, I didn't even know you were trying to beat him. I just thought you were just trying mm-hmm. to get out of it. Right. And so like I I think there there was a a space where it could have been like, okay, well now we have to um well now he's saying like I'm not going to take the money anyways. Or now blah blah we're like I think he drives home really of like this is on you and now this starts the entire adventure of like you gotta sell all this dope. And um yeah, so I would have wanted one more scene with him just to add a little bit more of like, oh god. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for me. Uh, other than that, I, I ain't got none, baby. Uh, I think all the things I've heard, I'm like, yeah, I can see that, baby. But for sure. So now we'll go into rating. Um, and uh, the, the who is who's it, Corey? And me, me first? and Tom. Okay. Yeah, it's you two first. Who you want? I'll go first since yeah. you suggested the film. Okay, for sure. Uh, four point nine. Four point nine for Corey. Yeah, just that. I just wanted more Nakia. For me, for seven million dollars, <laughs> it's a five, baby. It's oh, a five. I, 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 really, I knew. I it's I don't I don't for me I don't think there's a quote unquote better coming of age story for me. I think there are great ones. There, this sits on shoulders of legends and and titans and giants. And this is what we have. And I'm just more mad that no one talks about it as much as I think it, it's earned. Um, but that's it. Who's next? It's Katie. It's, Kate next. Cor- uh, it's Corey, last. I thought. No. Since- I oh, you already 4. went. 9. Thanks for thanks listening. Thanks for joining Kayla. the show. Yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs> We're Sorry, glad you're here, it. but you're late. But, yep, uh, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yeah, so mine is also a five. Oh, yeah. shit. Josh, mine is give also it to a five. Him. Josh, they give just, it to they him. They just, they're, there's so many... Like, uh, this is a movie I want to watch again and again and again and again. Yeah, like, they did 100%. such a good job of um, putting everything in there in a way. Putting. Sorry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> they, they just, they put a bow on it. It was it was perfect. Every scene, like you said, could be a favorite part. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Easily. 
Definitely. Easily. Jumping through the window getting chili fries. It's great. Uh, Josh, <laughs> yes. making sure to do that before they... <laughs> While they're being give me shot the fries, at. give me the fries. Um, I'm really, really sad that I didn't see this movie until now. It yeah. was in my purview before since them. it came out. Like it's been in my purview of like before I knew oh, you, Tom. <laughs> that's a movie I need to see. Like it's just it always comes up and recommended. It, it's 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 like I'm really sad that I didn't see this uh, before now. I know that I have those qualms, but it did not ruin my experience of this movie. I love this movie enough to watch it three times. I loved it. This mm-hmm. movie is a five. Did we, did we fulfill self-fulfilling prophecy this episode? Yeah. If you yeah. go back and watch, I look right at the camera when, when you said it, you're like, yeah, someone, Corey, maybe 4.9. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's I, the same. I agree with all those points. I just, I want them that I, 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 Wanted that to be a little more earned, I guess, story wise. It felt very well. It was yeah. enough for you to tack on a, a fraction of a point. <laughs> yeah, uh, it felt it felt tacked on, and I I feel like the character and the relationship they built in the movie was enough for me to want that extra. Or Let's if they had Let's another, do this all then. If they had another line where Nikia keeps asking about something or talking about Dom, then he feels like more pressure. I feel. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. So who who gets a shout out? Uh, nobody. Oh. oh no! See, Corey, Nobody gets sorry. Sorry. Oh. we can't say to the nerd on nation like, "Yeah, you should vote for Corey." <laughs> <laughs> Nobody voted for Corey. Wow! On this one, no one gets shout outs, baby. Well, I'm gonna double check, but I, I am will. gonna I am I'm gonna say, since I suggest this, you're you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get to say. I think I get to say it. I think I get to Just say this it. one. Thank because, you, Tom. Because people um, like, really you, Tom. liked it, and Tom, like I. I bought it instead of renting it. Like, <gasps> oh wow! I I I rented it and then I watched it. And I went, I'm gonna own this now. So I ended up paying more, but whatever. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, no, it's worth I, it. I it's worth it. it and, and it's a good. It's something. If it only made eighteen million dollars, guys. Thus far, come on. Really, it well, it just made surprised. another twenty. <laughs> <laughs> it's at well least on like its way. at least like fifty million. Come on, like that movie it's, deserves it's, so much. I'm more. really surprised. Like there. after watching it and hearing hearing those numbers, I'm like, wow, really? And ASAP Rocky, so like on. for a not actor, like did pretty freaking well. Yeah, and I was like, wow. So, I don't know. That, so he's I, an actor now, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I love it. I All love right. It, so. Cool. Everybody at home, thank you so much for Da-da-da. watching or listening or however you're ingesting our content. Thank you so do much. Do both. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do both. Uh, let us know what you thought of the movie Dope. If you have seen it, uh, do go into that Discord, nerdon.tv backslash Discord, and you can continue the conversation there. There is a movie channel there, or you can reach out to us on social media. We are Nerd on TV on everything except for Twitch. Twitch is that one thing that's just nerd on. So check us out there as well. Uh, YouTube, we have multiple channels, but all of our episodes are video. So check them out there. Wherever you listen, Apple, Spotify, iHeart, all of those things, subscribe, rate and review, share us with your friends and family. That's how we grow. And do consider joining that Nerd On Nation. It does, like I said, it, it allows us to grow. It allows us to keep upgrading our content and to be better for you. Uh, but yeah. That has been the episode. Thank you so much for listening. You know the drill. As always, nerd on. Nerd Nerd on. on. Ending broadcast.